Today's topic uh, is business and racism. And uh, you know, we started this summer series last year. And in fact, we let off. Uh, we were honored to have Dwayne join us in what we call part one on this very uh, important topic. And so this year we'll end the summer series with part two to continue this discussion. And our goal, I mean, is to keep this conversation going. You know, there's so much going on right now. It's, it's so easy for this important topic uh, just to get lost in the noise. And we wanna keep the conversation going. We wanna keep looking at how can we make things better uh, and especially at a tactical level, what are specific things we can do? Because as I say, anything worth doing is, uh, is difficult, but yet it's worth doing even better. And so when we talk about relationships, we talk about leadership and business, I don't think there's anyone better to help discuss that and lead us in this conversation than Dwayne Scott. And I'm honored for him to join us again. And just a little bit about Dwayne. Uh, he is a member of our uh, College of Business Dean's Board. Uh, proud to announce him as the current Deputy Commissioner for the Tennessee Department of Labor and Workforce Development. And I'm sure that came apart with a lot of his engagement. He's very active uh, with his family, uh, with his church and the community. A past CEO of SRS and uh, founder and CEO of TDS currently corporate leader with years with uh, Kroger's and uh, all around entrepreneur. And let's throw in author. Uh, uh, Dwayne, I'm going to put a plug in real quick. Okay. Uh, part of this, and I would encourage you to uh, look on Amazon, contact Dwayne about his book, Stepping Outside Your Comfort Zone, and how God stretches our faith. And I think there's going to be another integral part on this as we talk today uh, how does faith connect to this? How does treating others and leadership and business, how does this all come together to make a better world? And uh, so with no further ado, I'd love to turn this, off, uh, turn this over to you, Dwayne, and uh, let's begin. Thanks, Roy, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Delighted to have you uh, gather again with us. Um, as Ray said, it, it's, it's amazing how time flies. We, we started the first session off with, uh, with this topic. And, and I think, as Ray mentioned, I think it's going to um, resonate as we start talking about it, stepping outside your comfort zone. What does that look like to us individually as we talk about the topic of business and, and racism? Um, I, I'll, I'll dive right in and and I'm very, um, uh, um, if, for those of you who know me, I move, I, I move quite a bit, okay? So, and I like to write, I can't talk without sort of writing drawn. So I've got my, my, my dry erase board here and we'll, we'll do that. And between that and the PowerPoint, uh, we'll just sort of share some, some, some thoughts with you and want to encourage, want to encourage everyone to um, uh, interact with us. And, um, I, by no means, by no means uh, are, am I pr proposing that we're going to give the last word on racism. We're just going to hopefully uh, raise awareness level. That's what we're trying to do and uh, uh, help, it, help us to engage in the conversation, as Ray mentioned, that needs to continue. Uh, it, it's important, I think, that this continues, and I can appreciate Ray, the, the business department, and the university for having this sort of uh, vision to continue to sort of Talk, talk about a topic that's not so comfortable to talk about, okay? So uh, Dave is going to ask you to advance the next slide for me and we'll get right started. So um, I want to use a Stephen Covey quote, let's begin with the end in mind, okay? So where I'm going to sort of end with our, with my sort of uh, sharing here is, is really with uh, this sort of uh, image that you see in front of you. And I want to think about more than anything, don't you think about perspective, okay? Don't you think about perspective, okay? Because when you look at this image, okay, uh, you may see someone looking at you, or you may see someone looking from, from a side perspective, okay? Based upon how you look at it. Uh, and when you look at it 
for certain, and, and there's a whole nother psychological uh, uh, discussion we could have about uh, why you see something from a forward facing versus why you see it from the side. That's, that's, that's out of my lane. I'll just say it's about perspective, okay? <laughs> it's more than anything, it's about perspective. So when you look at this, this young man, African-American young man, you can see him looking to, 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 to your right as I'm looking at him, okay? Or he's looking right at me, okay? And, and I think more than anything I want you to think about is when you talk about the, when, when we start engaging about racism, I want you to be open to different perspectives, okay? I want you to be open to different perspectives as it relates to the topic of business and racism. See, if I, if I feel like I have all the truth as it relates to any kind of topic, then it's hard for me to be open to listen to anything else. If I feel like I have all the truth as it relates to that particular thing. And that's true of anything. It can be true of driving to cooking to, to you know, anything that we do in life. If I feel like I have all the truth, then I make myself not really open for additional truth to come in. Okay. And uh, uh, we, we'll talk about some, some spiritual principles inside of this. Okay. But one of the things that, 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 that I believe uh, when you look at, at the worldview, you know, from, from our creator, from God, all truth is God's truth, right? All truth is God's truth. Not all truth is in the Bible, okay? But all truth is God's truth. So there's medical truth, right? There's laws when it comes to heart surgery that you have to follow, the surgery you have to follow. If they don't, there'll be problems with that, all right? There's, there's geographical truth. There, there's, there's mathematical truth. So, so, but all truth belongs uh, 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 to God, I believe that. So as we start talking about racism, there's some truths uh, that, that we all ought to be open to, to talk about. And hopefully that's what we'll sort of look at. So, so what we hope to do, move to the next slide for me, Davis, if you will. So what I want to more than anything, I want to raise your self-awareness and I want to raise your awareness of others' perspective of the topic of, of racism, okay? Uh, so raise our, our, our self-awareness, okay? Uh, and we talk about self-awareness, we're talking about Basically, my being able to sort of look in the mirror, okay, and see myself, right? And when I can look in the mirror and I see myself uh, in a lot, and sometimes I see myself from different perspectives or others can see me. We'll talk about some models to even help uh, with our self-awareness. But I think, and what I hope through our discussion here for this next, you know, 40 minutes or so, that we'll, we'll talk about... Um, self-awareness as, as it relates to the topic of business and racism, and then hopefully raise your awareness of others' perspective of that, okay? And, and we'll, we'll talk along that lines, okay? So let's begin with a really a biblical principle. Next slide here. We'll talk about a, a um, uh, so in, in the book of Philippians, when Paul was writing to the church at Philippi, chapter 2, verse 4, I like the amplified, amplified version. It says this, Listen, and as we and I think it's very appropriate as it talks to the topic of business and racism. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. So Paul here sends a, a message to the church at Philippi, and I think that is resonates and is as true today as it was then. One of the keys to life and to this whole answer of business and racism, how does it, how does it co-mingle, how does it coexist, is, we, it's, 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 listen, part of it has to be our, um, and I, you know, I like my lenses, how we see things, okay? how we view things. So, so whether you physically wear glasses or not, or not, we all have lenses that we wear. And those lenses that we wear uh, can be um, affected. And, they, and not can be, not only can be, they are affected by different things, how we're raised, the experiences that we've had, the things we've seen others experience. All those come into who makes me, me, and makes you, you. And folks, we bring that to the table every day. And I have to just be aware, and, I, and, and yes, we're gonna talk about being aware of others' perspective, but it's important that I understand kind of my paradigms. And we're gonna talk about my biases because we all have these biases, okay, as well. 
So as we start to start in these discussions, I got to know, I have, I have to have this awareness of what I bring to the table every time I show up. Uh, there, was a, there was a book written uh, 30 years ago. It was called, Wherever You Go, There You Are, okay? <laughs> and there's a lot of truth to that, okay? So in order to, in order to uh, have this mindset that, 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 that Paul mentions here in, in, in uh, uh, Philippians, listen, don't merely, do not just merely look, listen, we have to look out for ourselves. Because matter of fact, that's a biblical principle too. We can, we can go to the scripture that says, uh, love others as you love yourself, right? Uh, um, um, so, so my love, my ability to love others is based upon how my, my self-love, okay? But what Paul uh, here urges believers to understand is, but it can't stop there. It can't stop there. It has to be able to sort of reach out and say, okay, he says, don't merely just be interested in your own issues or challenges, but you also have to be in, uh, uh, focused on the interest of others, okay? Now, the next slide tells us that that's not an easy thing. Matter of fact, this requires us many times to step outside of our comfort zone, okay? It requires us, and if you remember uh, the book that, that Ray showed you there, um, um, it kind of goes back to the story in the book. I talk about the invisible fence and, and how, it, how it's constructed with the, with the, most of the time it's a dog and they put the device in the dog neck and, and, the, and the animal learns to stay within that dotted line boundary. Eventually they remove all the flags and the ball and the dog stays within that, that, that invisible fence. And, and, and one of the primary points in the book that I wrote is human beings have invisible fences. And, and for the sake of the book, I call them our comfort zones. So I have, you and I have comfort zones and they, they're not named, they're not in writing anywhere, but they are as true and as, and as much in place as, <laughs> as you can see the, the thumbprint on your hand, all right? We have these comfort zones and these comfort zones uh, is where we learn to operate, okay? But in order to have new perspective, We've got to step outside that comfort zone. And some things start happening, uh, Ray and everyone. When I start, the closer I start moving toward that, that, that boundary, uh, those, those mental and physiological things that start happening when I start getting outside my comfort zone. The more I get to the edge of that boundary, you'll see uh, heart rate go up. You'll see my blood pressure. You'll see my breathing change as I, as I start moving outside my comfort zone because it does some things to us, okay? Uh, I think this topic of business and racism, um, it's not a topic that you, that you um, look forward to engaging in. It's not a topic that's very comfortable to talk about, but it's a topic that's very needful to talk about, okay? We do business, and then race starts coming into the picture. How in the world does that happen? How does that, and, and, and then what happens with the dynamics of that? Let's go to the next slide. I want to begin with a working definition. And there's a lot of them. I'm just going to use this one for the sake of, of our discussion this afternoon, okay? And it says this. This, this is one of Miriam Webster's definitions. A belief or doctrine that inherent differences among the various human racial groups determine culture or individual achievement. And that's a, that's a mouthful right there. A belief or doctrine that inherent differences among the various human racial groups determine culture and individual achievement. And it goes on to say this definition says, usually involving the idea that one's own race is superior and has right to dominate others or that a particular racial group is inferior to other groups. Racism. So it's, it's, this, in, it's this inherent idea that, that certain racial groups are not on the same par. And, and if I have any of that in my mind in any sort of way, then what happens is you will see me start um, acting in that way because it's, it's, it's kind of part of my DNA. And, and listen, folks, I think we all have biases on some level. I think we all do. 
Uh, it's when we can have interactions like this and start talking about it, it's where it becomes healthy for us. We're going to talk about in and out being, being healthy for us, okay? But when we start talking about step, stepping outside our comfort zone, uh, I'll give a couple of quotes today. Go to the next slide. And here's one of my quotes as it relates to this, this definition we just read. Different does not mean defective. Different does not mean defective. See, that's, so, so the very, that very quote there, different doesn't mean defective, really is a value system you have to adopt and put within your belief system. Because if I, listen, if I truly learn to say, you know what, different does not mean defective, and I really mean that, then you'll start seeing me act differently when I come in contact with people who are different than I am. I won't be as fearful. I won't be as, but, but if I feel like just because someone is different or I've been told that they're different and that means this, then what happens is you start seeing behaviors follow beliefs. And, and, and as it relates to racism in business, so, so, so you have to, so I, I challenge you to think about that different does not mean defective. Just because somebody does something different does not mean they're, you know, uh, uh, some people, it's just so funny, uh, in the morning time um, at work, you'll see some people uh, when they fix coffee, some people put, some people drink it black, just straight black. Some people will put two scoops of sugar in and some people put six. And, and, and it's funny, uh, we, we kind of kid, man, how much sugar, you know? Well, I mean, his six, my two, your zero, it's just different, okay? <laughs> and if we're not careful, just because they're using six, we might say, well, you, you don't need that much sugar. Now. Well, it's different, okay? <laughs> but, but, but the slightest things, we tend to, and we sort of kid each other, rib each other, but it really speaks to because it's different. So, so what made your one scoop rule the norm, right? <laughs> And everybody else, the abnormal, right? It's just kind of what we do psychologically in our mind on simple things, okay? Uh, 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 and, and matter of fact, but, but folks, so much of it becomes, um, we're, we're affected by the environment that we, we see. You know, the study of the, of the, of the toddlers and the uh, African-American dolls and the white dolls that they put with them and, and, what, what, and, and that study took place back in the 60s. They did it again recently uh, uh, at one of the major universities here. And, and there was not a whole lot of change that even the African-American children thought more of the white dolls than, the, than African-American dolls. So what, how in the world could a toddler at four years old already start having a preference? Well, it, it's what they're seeing. It's what they, so, so all these things what I'm just simply saying is we're affected by them. And, and what we'll be able to do today is talk a little bit about, the, uh, about our biases. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with three sort of uh, topics here is uh, blind spots. I think we all have blind spots. We're going to talk about what's urgent and what's important. Okay, and then we'll talk about um, when I get outside this step of this comfort zone as it relates to the topic of racism and business. Uh, am I going to step or am I going to get pushed? Okay, so those are kind of the three things we'll talk about here. Uh, let's go to this next slide. I got one more um, script I want to look at. Uh, Acts chapter 17, verse 26 says this. So, so, so let, me, let me preface this by this. I believe as believers, as believers, everything that we believe and do, my personal opinion, should be God filtered. That's what I mean. I mean, so so when when I become, when I when I obey the gospel and become a, a member of the body of Christ, then what I am adopting is, is the kingdom values. I'm agreeing that I'm going to strive from that day forward to adopt kingdom values versus my values. And so every, when I, so whenever a topic comes up, even as it relates to the topic of business and racism, I first have to say, what are the kingdom values that relates to this topic? Because rather than me saying, well, I believe da, 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 I have to say, well, what does God have to say about that? Because that's what I mean when I'm saying God filter. I think the challenge today is, even in the church, outside the church, is everybody just coming with their own opinions. And I believe and I think, 
versus being God filtered. Okay. And I believe in business. Good business is God filtered because there's principles in the word of God that makes us solid business winning men and women, solid employers, employees, when we use those principles, but it has to be God filtered. Here's what uh, Paul was writing in Acts 17, 26. He says this, he says, and, had, and speaking about people, just people and have made of one blood, all nations of men. Hmm. Remember we just talked about uh, uh, um, different doesn't mean defect. He said has, has made of one blood, all nations of men for to dwell upon the face, all the face of the earth and have determined the time before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. What he simply says is God has made all individuals out of one blood. He's determined that their, their, born, their birth date and their death date. And he's also determined where they will live, the boundaries, okay? Now, we're going to the moon now, right? If I was going to the moon and space, but you know what? They got to carry some things with them, don't they? <laughs> I mean, you can't just go to the moon because it's, it's outside our normal habitat, our normal habitation is here on Earth. So if you leave this, you got to do something special with that, right? But he says, here's what I've made of all nations out of one blood and the purpose to dwell on the earth together. So here's another takeaway thought. We're much more alike than we are different. As human beings, we're, we're, there's no argument. There's, we're a whole lot more alike than we are different. What is it that makes us want to focus on the differences? What is it that makes us zero in on the differences and it creates, I think, so that becomes part of the, 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 the uh, sort of paradigm when you talk about, okay? So let's go to some some practical points. Any, any comments or or um, questions right from anyone at this point? No, I uh, got. Uh, I think we'll save some of this to the end. Okay. So right, right now we're good. Right now we're okay. good. Very good. Very good. Okay. So uh, first of all, when it comes to business and racism, regardless of where you are in the business cycle, whether you're the owner, co-founder, CEO, uh, you're an executive group, uh, management, think about this. I want you to be able to ask yourself the question, what are my blind spots? What are, what are my, now, now that's different than asking the question, do you have blind spots, right? Because if I ask, do you have blind spots? That's, so this question implies that you have them. What are my blind spots? Uh, so for those of us that drive, have you ever been driving and you're on the interstate and you start to move over and someone very kindly or very aggressively lets you know that you're about to hit them. I've done this more than on one occasion, okay? You're in, the, you're in a lane and you start over and they, nah, 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 and, and you pull over because you, they were in your blind spot. You, you, thought, you looked and thought you, you were clear and then when you started over, you were right beside someone and they're in a blind spot and they let you know <laughs> You, you're about to hit them. You're in the blind spot, right? And it's not a good feeling because you, you immediately, if you're not careful, you're, 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 you're almost overcorrect getting out of the way because it's, it's so unnerving uh, to be in a blind spot. And, and there's, there's almost a type of vulnerability that we experience when you start to do that and, and, and someone has to tell you to get over here, you're about to hit them and you didn't see it. You looked, thought you saw it and you, and, and you didn't... Uh, 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 and you started over, and then you realized that you had a blind spot. It's it's a it's a it's not a real good feeling. Okay, I suggest to you the same thing is true with human beings. Uh, another biblical example of this: David. David had uh, had uh, Uriah killed. He had Uriah killed because he had slept with his wife Bathsheba and had. Uh, uh, she was pregnant. He tried to cover it up type deal. And he thought everything was over with. And, and uh, um, Nathan comes to him, the prophet, and tells him this story about this, this uh, rich guy and this poor guy. And this poor guy has just one lamb there. And, and uh, he talk, tells the story of how the rich guy has a guest come. He takes that one lamb and just you know, eats it and cooks it for and 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 and, the, and after the story, I'm, I'm shortcutting this, but David says, the Bible says David was furious. He was furious. He says, he says, God liveth, this guy will pay for what he did. I mean, he, he is, 
he is righteously indignant of what had just taken place. And Nathan said, David, this, I'm, I'm speaking of you. I'm talking about you, David. And um, it hit David like a ton of bricks because David truly, truly had a blind spot. He, he, he is given an indictment on this guy in the story and he doesn't, he's got a, he's blind to the stories about him. And when Nathan reveals that it's him, I think that's one of the things that, 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 uh, that I encourage us to think about. I think it's one of the things that, that, that you see our creator in heaven toward us, how he acts. Because the Bible, he would, God would later, he's the only person God says, he's a man after my own heart. Hmm. How in the world could David be involved in that kind of thing, have that kind of blind spot, and still it's because of what his heart was once he saw the blind spot. Once David saw the blind spot, read the 51st Psalms every now and then. David has a contrition that is, is, is second to none. He says, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. In other words, so when David is faced with his blind spots, he's contrite about it. So what does that mean to us? I suggest to you that we'll have blind spots in relation to our racial perspective of things from time to time. And you know what we need? We need people within our circle. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about We all have these different circles of influence. If this is, if this is you, you got your own circle of influence. And you know what? Uh, we need people in our lives that are like Nathans, if you will, that can speak truth to us and show us our blind spots. Um, in the book, uh, and I may have done this last time, um, um, now I'm, I'm an econ major, and there's a Johari window that says, this is what you know about you, and this is what others know about you. Thing they know and they don't know, things that you know and don't know. Well, there's a reveal part of you that you know and others know. There is a uh, hidden part of you that you know and others don't know. But there's some things about you that others can see that you can't see. That creates blind spots. And I suggest to you, uh, part of the question is, is what, what blind spots do I possibly have when it comes to how I relate to people with business and this topic of racism? Uh, is it possible that I've got some blind spots? How do I react when my blind spots are revealed? Do I, you know, and you know what, folks, that's, it takes maturity to be, you know, it's tough when we, when we get information that's not positive toward us. We have to kind of step back. But maturity lets us say, okay, I probably needed that. That's why the book that I, that I wrote says how God stretches our faith. God stretches our faith by, by putting me outside the comfort zone, not inside of it. He, he, he allows me to intersect with people that, um, that, that speak maybe some truth, maybe not the way I like it, but maybe it's still truth. Uh, and I suggest to you, we get to, we get to see these, these flashes of ourselves from time to time when we make certain interactions. And then I have to ask myself, okay, what did I learn about myself in this situation? What will I do differently as a result of this situation? Blind spots give you those opportunities, those like those flash in the pan moments. Okay, move to the next slide for me. Um, the um, the next point is when you when you start getting information about the uh, uh, and Ray Ray said this a moment ago. Um, it's so difficult. It's so easy to. Um, it's a lot of things going on. The variant's going on. The surge is coming back. We, we, I mean, and 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 racism can fall to the wayside, and uh, it only would come up again until there's a flash in the pan. Uh, but I think us uh, and this, it's situations like this, it's it's uh, uh, discussions like this that help sort of raise awareness level. We're trying to do. Um, Urgent versus important. Listen, urgent things are constantly grabbing our attention. The urgent things is what demands attention. And usually the urgent things are what drives us. But urgent things are not necessarily important things. Um, there's, a, there's, a good, there's, a, there's a good 
Here's another matrix, okay? Matter of fact, uh, our own ex-president uh, Eisenhower has a has a um, uh, a urgent important matrix. Okay, uh, it says uh, things that are important, things that are urgent. Okay, and uh, so 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 these are high and low, high and low. So things that are highly important, high urgent. You need to do those immediately. If it's high urgent and high important, you need to be doing it. If it's high urgent and low important, okay, you need to plan that. Put down the screen, you're planning it. Okay, it's, a, it, it's, it's the urgency is there uh, 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 and the importance is low, you can plan that, right? But if it's high importance, and low urgent, you delegate it. And if it's low importance and low urgent, you eliminate it, right? <laughs> so, 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 so the point is, is when we start saying, okay, where does, where does and, and, and so part of the question would be is, where does racism fall in their teeth? Um, um, uh, it, it, it's one of those things that I suggest to you, you know, Important things kind of just kind of will, 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 will set, will take the back seat as long as you give it, uh, put it back there. But then what happens is what we see, in, in, and we've seen it here in, in, our, in our own country, uh, it, it creates these powder keg moments when you, when you keep pushing something that's really important to the, to the bottom of the pile, okay? So, so the question is, is uh, what specifically do you need to probably consider working on as relates to uh, um, your racism sensitivity, okay? Uh, one of the things that I suggest to you to think about, and I'm just saying myself is, is have discussions with people of the opposite race about it. That you and, and here's the thing about it. It needs to be, it needs to be safe. Uh, it needs to be in a, uh, an environment where with someone that you feel safe with, they feel safe with, but just having initiated a discussion. Because just having the discussion, I believe, creates an awareness level that you 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 just can't get anywhere. Else. And 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 listen, I can't do it with the same race, okay? I've got to do it with the opposite race, okay? Just because because of the perspective, and 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 I've got to stay open with that. And and so think about this. Uh, so Ray, when I call him, said Ray, I want to have a cup of coffee and we talk about race. All right. Uh, listen, when we that, that folks, now we're going down a road to where we 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 can we can we're making progress. Other than let's don't talk about it, let's let's ignore it. Um, um, uh, we did this; it's over with. And, and listen, I'm going to tell you from this perspective, from 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 a from, a, from an, an African American perspective, you know, and I say this to a lot of people that I talk with, I can't walk around with with anger and 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 uh um dwelling about here's the way this i can't believe our folks have done this way and i stay angry my whole life no more than you can't act like things never happen i mean there's a there's, there's a there's a middle ground that has to be um, um reached by both parties else we go these polar opposites and folks uh uh nothing good comes out of that nothing good comes out of that okay uh, matter of fact, we just find ourselves polarizing, and this world becomes uh, less uh, uh, of what it needs to help people to sort of move toward a way that, that points it toward our Creator. Okay, let's move toward the uh, other slide, if you will, Davis. Um, so this comfort zone that we're talking about. You know, one or two ways you get out of it. You step outside of it or you get pushed, okay? When we had this uh, uh, perfect example, the pandemic pushed us outside the comfort zone in ways we never imagined. Now, when you get pushed outside your comfort zone, that goal area represents growth. 
The white area of that person in that on the screen that you're looking at represents the, the current comfort zone. But once you get pushed outside of it and you or you step outside of it, now your boundary grows. And that goal represents new areas of growth that you experienced. And the only way you would have experienced it is you had to step outside of where you currently were. And what that means is that looks like, what does that look like? That looks like me learning things about myself that I didn't know. It means I got a chance to see some things about me that I didn't know. And I and listen, folks, that in itself takes humility for me to say, I didn't know that. Uh, um, uh, I always refer to the, the and, and I know you've seen this before, the four levels of learning. So even when it comes to racism, you know, the first level of learning is unconscious incompetence. I don't even know what I don't know. That's the first so, I, so listen, I don't even know what I don't know, okay? So that's why I'm spending time with, with getting different perspectives what happened with that. But but you want to get to the, the next. So the next step up is conscious incompetence. <laughs> I know what I don't know, right? So, so, and once again, that's just spending time, information. You want to get to this level where you have conscious competence. I know what I know. And that's about me and about others as it relates to this topic of racism, folks. It, 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 you, you can learn some things about some people. You can learn some things about your, yourself. But I've got to step outside this bit to get there, okay? And then this fourth level is unconscious competence, okay? Uh, and what happens there, folks, is that's not a good place. We need to stay right here. Here, I think I know it all. Oh, I, I, or I, 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 da, 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 da. And, I, and I'm not open to new information because I said I've, I've had, you know, uh, uh, Ray's been my friend for da, 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 da years. And I, I have white friends and, and uh, I know everything there is to know about from that perspective. Well, that's not true. And I have to be open to different perspectives. And folks, part of that comes through just relationship building. That just spending, and you know what that means? That means spending time with people. It means, it means, uh, uh, you know, when, when the dad is talking about the son, I want him to be a chip off the old block. Well, it's hard to be a chip off the old block if the block's not around to be chipped on, right? So that means, that means, and, and our greatest investment that we have, folks, is our time. When we give time to each other, we're giving the greatest asset, not monetarily, it's the greatest asset we have is our time because I'm giving of myself, okay? Uh, and, and listen, organizations have comfort zones. Uh, church leaderships have comfort zones. Memberships have comfort zones. And, and the thing is, is the very thing that keeps us inside here is the same. You, the primary uh, uh, thing that keeps us in there is fear. Fear is what keeps us in there. Whether it's, well, we don't want to try that, it's, it's fear. So, so listen, so, so once again, let's talk about being God-filtered. What does the Bible have to say about fear? Well, I hear Paul talking to Timothy saying, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. So fear doesn't come, uh, uh, constrictive fear doesn't come from God. It comes from our adversary, okay? So listen, we talk about fear. Uh, there's three types of fear. And I'll say this often. First of all, there's consecrated fear. Consecrated fear is like... Uh, Fear God, keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. That's, uh, that's standing in awe of God and our creator. It should be growing every day. That type of awe and respect for our creator, that fear we need, okay? There is a um, constructive fear that you're born with. And it helps us get out of harm's way when we're in trouble. It lets you run when there's a fire. It gets adrenaline punch. We need that kind of fear. The bad kind of fear, and this is the fear that, that Paul's talking to Timothy with, is constrictive fear. Constrictive fear does, does exactly what it sounds like. It, it sort of constricts. It mobilizes. And Ray says, Dwayne, can, can we go? I, I'm not going to do that. Right because I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't know you. I don't know what you're about. I mean, see, that kind of fear that creates suspicion and and, and make me not, I mean, that's that's the bad kind of fear. Uh, he would go on to say that uh, this sort of fear has torment. It agitates our mind. That's the kind of fear that makes us stay in the comfort zone and not want to get out of it, okay? And once again, as I said, 
leaderships, uh, memberships, uh, companies co have comfort zones. And if you start pushing them toward that boundary of that comfort zone, you'll see them react pretty much the same way. Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, forceful, sometimes it's rationalizing, but so it, com it comes in a lot of different forms. But when we start getting pushed out of that comfort zone, it does some things to us. But my, my philosophy is this, it's healthy for us. It's healthy for us to step outside that comfort zone. One more slide, then we'll take some questions. Then, right? Yeah, or I, if it's okay, I'll throw some in right now. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. Okay, we'll catch. You know, in, in your book, you're talking about jumping the water uh, versus being pushed, because it, it ties into what you were just talking about with fear. Mm -hmm. But if you're, you know, you're re responsible for others, you're in an organization, you're trying to keep the conversation going. Any suggestions on how uh, how to actually push people into the water uh, to, and, and that was your analogy, but to step outside their comfort zone. Right. I mean, I, we all know as a kid, you know, there was that point in life where we were all thrown into the pool to right. learn to swim, mm -hmm. uh, at least I was. Yes, yes. And, and, and that was a, a very quick, cheap lesson for my parents. But, <laughs> but any suggestions on how to help people are when you sort of have to push them into this. Uh, well, Ray, I would say this, particularly with particularly with businesses. Okay, uh, I think it's I think it's all about culture, the culture that is created within that organization, and and the, and that starts with the leadership and creating an environment to where uh, and, and because I think people are watching, uh, you know, leadership is about influence. It's literally about influence. Okay. And, and, and now more than anything, Ray, what people are starting, I mean, even though I think what the, what the pandemic has done is allowed people to have a reset of, of values of what's important, of, of, of where I want to work and who I want to work for. And, and people had to go back home and they got the value of reconnecting in ways that they never would have done had this pandemic not happened. And they've got a different set. So, so, so I'm working with the state right now. We've got 1,200 people working in our department, okay? And I'm telling you, we, we're talking about this alternative work type deal. Most folks saying this, I can get this done here. Why, why, why do I have to come back? And we're saying, why do you have to come back? I mean, if you can show the productivity, in other words. So, so the point is this, is, and I know that's not the case for everyone, but we've got to be willing to, we can't just say well, because we've always done it this way. So leadership has to emulate what they're trying to create within their organization. And folks, I'm not talking about with reckless abandon, but, but you know what I find is just raw, honest, and humility gets a lot of equity with your people. And, 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 and the leader starts saying, listen, we're going to start making some steps. And folks, I'm going to tell you, we're not very comfortable doing it. It's outside our comfort zone. But we're going to make these steps, and then we're going to take another step. That is what creates culture. And I think, uh, you know, and who is it? Uh, Peter Drucker said this, culture is strategy for breakfast, okay? <laughs> I mean, the culture in an in organization will, will far outlast anything else. And I think, uh, Ray, from the standpoint uh, with the whole pandemic, we have to be willing to sort of emulate what, 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 what areas do we need to expand our paradigm on what we're doing? You know, I was talking with one of my friends who runs, a, uh, he's a general manager at Gap here in Gallup. And they have an app now, which is, this is really odd. They have an app that every, I think Thursday, all the employees is a blank screen and they've got 3,500 employees to work there now. And I don't know how many of them do this, but they get to pick their own schedule for the next week on the app. So everybody puts in the day they want to work in the time and it builds the schedule. And then they fill in the blanks. Now think about that. Think about it. What it took to, 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 to you told me you letting, I mean, think about from a manager, you letting them pick their schedule? Well, within parameters, you can. They put the parameters within the app, but he said, man, it is one of the most empowering things that they've ever done at that organization because people get to pick what time, what shift they're going to work type deal. They know they're, I mean, so it's like, now, now I'm sure, I don't know what it took for that management team to sort of step outside that comfort zone, but that's a big deal, you know. 
uh, but I bet, but I, I think organizations learn to do that are going to get the benefits of it, right? And I don't know what those, what those kind of things are. Okay, you know, and you, you talk about that with the gap and the with the app, uh, and when you step outside the comfort zone to actually uh, for the on racism have. You know, I know now you're on the state side. You've got obviously your own companies uh, and those companies you've worked with. I don't. Have you seen a particular example where you you thought, hey, that's that would be a good model for other businesses to follow? Uh yes, right. I would say uh, 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 for sure. You know, uh, um, so uh, one of the things within our organization. So so yes. Obviously, I'm African American, and I have a company that way. But but the thing is, is uh, so so even you can have an African American company, but if you just say all I want is African American employees working for this company, you're gonna lose out on some good talent. You see, understand what I'm saying? In other words, so you 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 I don't care. It, it it goes to both ends of the pendulum. You know, where's where, where's the best talent? Okay, uh, even what I've seen with the state now, you, you start seeing a just a a a, a uh, on a whole nother level of diversity, you know, uh, within different departments. And, and if you're not careful, we, we, what we have to constantly be aware of is talking about what, what, what are our biases? What are our biases? And, 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 uh, uh, and, and making it okay to have those sort of discussions and then talking about what, how, how, how is that, how, how can that be uh, uh, harmful to us, you know, and, and, and Ray, those are just, those are non-traditional sort of discussion. Now, now we've had that dialogue, I, I just opened up a lab in Nashville, and, and there's a specific skill set, okay, uh, uh, obviously, and qualifications in, in, in running the lab, but, but, but I think, Ray, uh, what I've personally done is, is, is been able to um, um, create an environment to where um, uh, biases can be challenged, um, and I and I and I, and I, and I don't know any way to put it other than saying the, the leader has to create that environment, that safe environment where that where where those discussions can take place. I don't know whether you do it in your, your retreat, whether you do it in in the in the uh, uh, um, where it's in the absence of the of the leader and he comes back in. Uh, so many times you have to be able to, you have to be willing to dismiss yourself. Let the team come up, and then you enter the meeting after that. Rather than you, when you're in the meeting with that group, it's just difficult to talk to give it the kind of feedback when when your leader's there. So, can I can I create that sort of environment by remove myself and then coming in after the fact with the group? I think that's one way. Okay, and that's good. And I think I was going to read this question. I think because it ties into that. This is probably more on an individual level, but. How do you start a conversation with someone who has been in a certain comfortable zone uh, for so long? And, you know, I, I immediately start thinking about when you say push into the, uh, the water, but if, but how do you start, how would you, you start a conversation with someone who is, uh, they're already comfortable where they're at? Well, you know, and, and, and that's so, so good, good, good point, right? And I think this, I think, uh, so, so one of the things I think you have to realize is ultimately the only person I have the ability to change is myself, right? You know, that, and that's a lot. I can't change anyone other than myself, but I might be able to influence that. So, so um, I think, right, here's my thought. I think people have teachable moments just like children do. I don't think, when we talk about kids having teachable moments, uh, when a child asks the question, you know, uh, daddy, why did such and such, such, why did such and such, such, that's a teachable moment. They're open for information. They're asking. When they ask that question, that's a teachable moment for them. I think adults have teachable moments. Uh, uh, and and um, I think you have to just sort of be intentional and look for those. You know, uh, part of that rate comes with just spending time, right? Uh, if I don't have a relationship with someone and they don't know me and they don't feel safe with me, I'm not going to probably come in and start telling them some things that I see about them. It's just not going to. It's not going. There's got to be a relationship built first. So even even for the person that's think they're okay, I think you got to build a relationship where they feel safe with you. Then, at the teachable moment, you can offer up a piece of information or an insight about them to do that. But the relationships come before the information. Right. Okay. No, that's that's very good, Dwayne. And I tell you, this it's, this uh, 
this theme is keeps generating more questions. Uh, but you know, when you do step out of your comfort zone, I don't know if you have some words of encouragement on, you know, because sometimes if you do, you know, you may get bit or you may, mm -hmm. um, it may seem like it, or you may stumble, you may do it wrong and actually end up offending someone instead of uh, drawing closer. But, yeah. you know, uh, any what encouragement you could give for if it doesn't work the first time to come back and try again. Yeah, uh, right. I think it's, uh, um, um, right. I, I think, you know, our, our heart, you know, uh, you know, um, what's the, at the, at the heart of the problem is the problem of the heart, you know, and, and, and when we start talking about having dialogues with individuals, uh, uh, people have to know that you have a genuine concern and care for them. If people, and it goes right back to this relationship thing. If, if I have a relationship, then you will oversee, you, you overlook some flaws in my life. Okay, uh, my attempts. Okay, uh, you know, matter of fact, uh, James in the book of James will say this. He said, "If any man stumble, he's, he said we stumble in many things. But if any man offend not in the tongue, he's a perfect." So, so we've all had that that foot in the mouth uh, uh, moment, right? But, but once again, if you've got a relationship, I can usually kind of come back and say, "Right, listen, forgive me for for how I said what I said," and I can. Uh, but can we pick back up and, and, you know, so, so, uh, but, you know, kind of cutting the line when it's tangled, you know, don't, don't keep trying to fight with, let it, let there some space be. But I think, I, Ray, I think it all goes back to relationships. Am I willing to, to, because here's the other point, you know, I've got to make some deposits with you and I before I can start telling some things about yourself, some withdrawals, right? There's going to be some deposit, there's going to be some trust bill for that to happen. Then we can sort of get to that point. Okay. Okay, no, very wise. And I, uh, I was looking at the time. I want to make sure I let you uh, finish then before we jump into any more questions. I'll let you. Know. Okay, let, let me close. Like I, got, I think I have a one one last slide here. Okay. Um, and 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 and, I, and here's uh, I'll end with the verse we talked about. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. That comes from Philippians two four. So here, here's what I want you to only leave you with this on perspective. The more I allow kingdom values to influence my life, the healthier person I become. So, and that means perspective. That means allowing, in other words, uh, and, 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 and Ray, it means even when I'm with a friend of mine and I hear a, a biased or racist comment that I'm, that I'm comfortable enough to, to be the opposing voice with that. And that's going to create a whole nother discussion. So many times we, we become so focused on, I don't, if Ray and I are together and Ray makes a comment to someone, I don't want to make Ray mad, so I just stay quiet. And, and you know, quietness is just a stamp of approval of what was said if I don't say anything. So, so, so the point is, is, is when I get to the point where I can say, you know, uh, uh, you know, Ray, that wasn't nice. I don't, I mean, it doesn't have to be a hammer and a nail. It could be just a, you know, you know I mean, how we say things, right? Matters how it's delivered. You know, man, that probably wasn't, that, that wasn't the nicest thing. So how would you feel if you someone, someone said that about it? You know, I mean, it, it, you literally can be conversation changers just by offering another word when we, when, when we do it. And if someone says that or, or someone corrects us, when we do it. You know what? You're absolutely right. I need to be more aware of that. I mean, so I think being able to say something when we see something in a kind sort of way. No, it's excellent. And, it'll, and Ray, it'll always be uncomfortable, but I would just encourage us all to embrace the uncomfortableness, okay? That's part of the growth. No, I, and I, um, I want to make sure I uh, was trying to get everyone's questions in. So I'll probably ask, try to squeeze one more in, uh, okay. uh, Dwayne. And it says uh, about, what about when it comes to your businesses and people coming back to support you? Um, I guess it maybe uh, I'll, I'll say maybe that's referring to what if you 
you don't want to offend customers, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, there will be fork in the road moments. I call them fork in the road moments. You have to decide, you know, what, what, what's more important. Um, and, and you have to have those, those you know, uh, there, there, there are times with minority, being a minority business enterprise, that you run, a, run up against, you know, some very clear, definitive <laughs> biases, okay? And, and the point is, okay, how do, how, do, how do you handle that? How do you, because part of that is, is, is when you have a team and you see that you've hit a wall and it's because of the bias, how do you go back and talk to that team about that, you know? And, and part of my responsibility as a leader is, is putting a, 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 uh, the glass is half full sort of perspective on it. You don't deny reality. That's right. Am I still on, Ray? Yes. Okay. No, you're, you're good. And uh, no, everything's good. And I think, I guess we'll use that as a time to... Uh, you may want to ask Davis to put up, I think you had your last slide about how. Just to connect, yes. Right, how to connect. Absolutely, I'm on Facebook uh, and on Twitter um, uh, and would love to sort of stay engaged. Um, you know, DwayneScott.com is a website that I have with resources there and uh, I would, would love to talk sidebar with anyone, uh, maybe a cup of coffee. Um, I think, one of my one of my uh, philosophy of life is is building relationships, you know, uh, and I think that's the, one of the keys to life is just healthy relationships when all is said and done. So thanks for the opportunity to share, Ray, and hopefully we've been able to bend some benefit, raise some awareness level with folks who relate to this topic of uh, business and, and racism. Okay. No, this this is great, Dwayne. And I tell you, I I think it was a God thing. You know, if you recall, a couple of years ago we ran into each other by accident. Mm -hmm. I think it was of leadership, Middle Tennessee. We That's were right. the host in Williamson County, and you were the guest, you and your class. And uh, I am so glad we ran in, in each other. I still remember in that bookstore. I do too. I do too. And uh, we've been blessed ever since. And I, I, I appreciate uh, what's so meaningful is I, you know, what you say. I know you believe, and you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is very helpful. And, uh, and I know we've, again, this is our second time you and I have done this particular format. You've done many other uh, series of instructions uh, mm -hmm. working in conjunction with the university, but, uh, and still, I know we've just scratched the surface, but thank you very much. And I thank all those who have attended. Uh, it's been our honor to host you. And, uh, and I will end on one commercial. Uh, those of you who are alumni and, uh, We'd ask you to join us uh, to a alumni sounds baseball game on August the 27th. And you can go to our linked uh, College of Business LinkedIn and Facebook uh, to get more information and please join us there. And uh, thank you once again, Dwayne. And I look forward to the next time we, we get together and, uh, and share some coffee. Look forward to it. Everyone take care.